All right, we've reached step five, and we're gonna start talking about making an offer on a home. So we wanna make sure that your offer is taken seriously. So let's talk about a complete offer. A complete offer is gonna be your offer form, your pre-approval of your financing, and your proof of funds. Sometimes people do verbal, verbal offers, or they'll just send in the offer form written out somehow. Um, sellers want a complete package. They want the form, they want the approval, they want the proof of funds, whether your um, proof of funds is just your down payment or if it's you know the full amount if you're paying cash. Okay, so how much should you offer? Well, there's a few things you wanna keep in mind, like how much interest does the home have? If you happen to go to open house, you wanna pay attention and see how many other buyers are looking at the home, how many people are interested, and if you happen to hear or overhear somebody already considering putting an offer, you wanna keep that in mind. It's gonna help you determine how serious you need to be, how quick you need to make an offer, and also let you know that you might not have a lot of space to negotiate. You wanna go in with your highest and best, and not waste time going with a low offer and taking the risk of losing out because there were several other offers and yours was at the bottom or the lowest bid and you lose out on that house. Your agent will be able to pull up some comparables of homes that have recently sold in the neighborhood. Usually within the last six months, unless the inventory is low, then maybe they'll go back for the whole entire year you'll be able to see what homes actually sold for. And this is gonna give you a better idea on how much you should offer in the home. You never wanna overpay. You also don't want to, you know, offend the seller by going in with a very low offer and completely, completely lose out in the opportunity to even negotiate with that seller. How much are you comfortable offering is another good question, right? You want to kind of have a general idea in mind on maybe you're going to start here but you're not willing to go any higher than a certain amount and I like to tell my buyers what is the number you know that you're comfortable offering and if that home sold for one dollar more right or you lost out on a bidding bidding war you know because somebody bid that one dollar more than you you're okay with it you're fine losing that house because you're not paying that extra dollar. Keep that number in mind, it's gonna help. And you can set up an es escalation clause with your agent so they understand. Maybe you wanna go in at 500,000 and you're willing to go up another thousand dollars should there be a higher offer ahead of you. And you're also not willing to go maybe past 550,000, right? So they know where you're starting how much you're willing to go up on any competing offer and where you're willing to stop. And you know, if you lose the house, that's it. You're comfortable staying where you're at. And most importantly, you have to keep in mind how soon do you need to move? It's a very important thing to think about. If you have a timeline, a time frame when you have to be in your new home, you really don't want to waste a lot of time putting in offers or trying to, to spend a lot of time negotiating and either losing out on several offers or just wasting time going back and forth when, when you could just put in that offer and move forward and be happy with whatever you're putting forward on the table. So what does the offer form contain? Well, every brokerage might be a little different, so I'll just cover what mine looks like and it's usually going to include your name and your current address. It's going to include the property address that you're looking to put an offer on, your offer price, along with the earnest money that you'll be putting down at contract, going into escrow until the closing date, your mortgage amount if you're financing, and then the balance owed at closing. That way the seller is aware of all the numbers all the terms and they have a clear mind of what your offer means. Lastly, you don't want to forget any contingencies on your offer. A contingency might include you, uh, you, you yourself are selling your home, right? So your offer will be contingent on the sale of your home because you might need that money from the sale of your home to actually move forward with this new purchase. 
And of course, I always uh, encourage my buyers to include contingent on you know a satisfactory home inspection, on the structure, a termite inspection. That's really important, and it's just it's a great thing to add from the very beginning. And then we move on to waiting to hear back from the seller, waiting on the seller's decision. And it really just depends. Sometimes we'll get an answer the same day, maybe the next day, or it might take a few days because maybe there's multiple offers or the seller is showing a few more days and they're really waiting to see what offers they come in so they can review them and make a decision and move forward and not have to go back and forth between one buyer and another buyer and you know it just kind of saves a little bit of time if they wait a few days uh, before accepting an offer because nothing is set until we sign contract. So the seller will either counter once they receive an offer and negotiation begins. Maybe they are you know wanting you to raise the, the offer a little bit more and leave it in, in your hands to decide whether you're willing to meet them. They could decline altogether um, like I said, if they receive multiple offers, they might not waste time going back and countering or negotiating if they feel that they have one really strong offer that they're confident moving forward with. Or we get lucky and you get an accepted offer and we get to move into step six, which will be next the next video where we'll cover the contract and the home inspection.